Today is supposed to be the hottest day of the summer yet. What's the weather like today? In Wilcox, there's an excessive heat warning in effect until Monday, June 14th, 8 p.m. The current weather is 89 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly sunny skies. You can expect more of the same today, with a high of 107 degrees and a low of 66 degrees. Update on the temperature. It's now 1054 and 100 degrees outside. And it's funny, but 85 degrees doesn't seem like a cool temperature. But with this mini split AC, it blows the air down through the whole length of the bus. And it literally gets too cold for me. I have to turn it down, turn it up. How do you say that? Right. <laughs> I have to make it not blow such cold air on me all the time. <laughs> I'm sure it's partially due to the awesome curtains <laughs> I created. <laughs> Just kidding. No, they are doing their job. Um, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. See behind it, it's hot back here. Yeah. But with the insole shine. Gosh, it just makes it, it really does. Well, it's really noticeable where we're parked right now. The dinette side of the table is where the sun is shining in the morning, and it's super hot. Like the heat just radiates off the glass until we shut these curtains, and then that changes everything. So, yeah, the AC definitely gets a little too cold for me at times. Update it's 207 and 105 outside. Dang, we're up to 106 now. Did you hear the thunder? Oh my God, though. What's going on out there? Is it gonna rain? You're staying in the bus? It's that time of year in Arizona. Almost time for monsoon to start. I think June 13th is the official start of monsoon season. You know what? I think June 13th was like either yesterday, today, yesterday. I'm not even sure what day it is, you guys, but it's pretty much time for monsoon season. I hear a little pitter-patter. Seriously, it just rained for like a full 30 seconds. Didn't even get the ground all the way wet. Hey, it's raining! <laughs> when you live in the desert where it's so bitterly hot and dry, there is nothing better than the rain. However, this rain is coming with some wind. I think I better shut the door. The rain on the skylight was so loud, I couldn't even hear my show on TV, so. I had to shove pillows in the skylight to block out the sound. <laughs> The unthinkable has just happened. Oh yeah. I need, so I need something. Like a towel. I need a cup. A cup. 
so you know that little drain hose for our air conditioner that goes down behind the new piece of trim we put up Mike just couldn't leave it alone. He keeps coming over here and tugging on it and pulling on it to try to get more water to drain out because water is dripping out from the bottom of our unit. So he's tugging on this hose trying to get it to drain better. And I was like, you probably better stop doing that before you pull it unplugged from the whole unit and then we'll be up the creek. And it just happened. He pulled the hose loose from behind the AC unit. So now <laughs> we're super screwed no we're not we'll be able to fix it this is going to be hard this is going to be a huge pain in the butt like i guess i know what we're doing the rest of our afternoon <laughs> i can't believe i even warned you this is going to be brutal <laughs> okay i'm so sorry That was scary. Right. Okay, are you gonna need me to like stand here and hold it or something? I'm just trying to figure out where the water drain is. Will you pull this, pull this back and hold it there? Don't lift up, just pull out. I do think that the way we're doing it this time is... How we should have done it the first time? No. <laughs> oh. Um, I think we're going underneath some things instead of over them this time. Oh, inside there? Well, that's cool. That might be helpful. <clears throat> so now you guys know what's behind our books. Insulation. I mean, the board that comes out. Yeah, that's super handy. Let's make some cold air and let's make some precipitation. What? What's that? Did you know it did this? Let me see. Ha! Who knew you could find something new while you're cleaning? What is turbo? What is turbo? I don't know. Push that one. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> I want turbo AC. Everybody wants turbo AC. So I take it that little white thing is not in the little box. It's a secret agent remote control. James Bond kind of stuff. Ooh. I'm going to have to learn yeah. how to turn that off. No way. Leave you it are going to freeze me out of this bus, mister. I'm just going to be banished to the bedroom from now on, trying to let some warm air come in the windows on me. 89 degrees outside, she's complaining of being cold, as usual. Well, in front of the <laughs> AC, on turbo. Dude, that's awesome. I didn't know we had turbo mode. I know, I didn't know we had a, a fancy remote control either. Who knew? Just look at how pretty the sky is right now, with these little pink clouds and these big yellow-orange clouds. <laughs> wow, that was so That was cool. I know some of you were concerned about how hummingbirds were going to find our hummingbird feeder with us moving all the time. And obviously the same hummingbirds aren't going to find it, but no matter where we go, they find it. There's a lot of hummingbirds in Arizona. They're everywhere.
How cool, that was a cactus wren. I just have to tell you, it is truly impressive how many dishes I can cram into our dish drainer up here. You can't even see the rack, there's so many dishes piled in it. <laughs> I love this thing. This was one of the best ideas we got from watching YouTube. I'm so glad we built it. I think it's starting to rain. <laughs> We're getting some driving rain, for sure. It's coming at us. in the desert. You think you want to go out there, huh? Let's see. Pretty wet. Oh, my bell's got blown down. Oh, it's very wet, Mama. <laughs> I hear frogs. Definitely hear frogs. <laughs> it's chilly out there. Come on, Mama. Come on down. That's how she does it. Oh, one rung at a time. Gotta stop and take a scratch break. Come on, Mama. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Come on, Mama. Mama oh, Kitty. Come on. Come on down. <laughs> You're being a weirdo. You're being very weird. There she goes. Well, come on. You can do it all the way. There she comes. All right, that only took half an hour. So the problem is, even though there's this drain hose, the water wasn't draining enough. We think the hose was kind of level in there instead of at a slight decline, and it was causing water to drip out the bottom. But just this morning, I realized that where the water was hitting the vent for our diesel heater, it was dripping off that and down onto the cupboard of my little shoe shack and the wood is water damaged. We just hadn't noticed it. We'll see how bad it looks once the wood actually dries out. Maybe it's hard to tell right now while the wood's still wet, 
but um, we're trying to raise the air conditioning unit just enough so that the water will run down the tube better and hopefully not pool up and drip out the bottom of the unit. Here's the damaged cupboard. The water is falling and dripping on this little vent cover thingy and then we didn't realize it was dripping off, pooling up right here and then running down and dripping down the whole front of this cupboard and causing this water damage. So, you know, up close it looks pretty ugly, but I think once it dries from way back here, I don't think it will be that noticeable. I don't think it's that big of a deal. What was happening behind the scenes that would have been impossible to film is there are four things coming in and out of the back of the mini split. Most of it comes from the, the, the outside piece. Coolant lines come in and out there. Two coolant lines. Two, two coolant lines. There's a power line that comes from there also. And then there is a condensation drain. Inside in the bottom of this thing, there's a tray that theoretically is supposed to catch all the condensation. And then there's a little drain hole. And that drain hole is coming out in a hole we cut in that big piece of wood right there and going to the side and there's a little tube that we were working on. Yeah, the, the drain would run along inside behind this piece of wood. There's the drain tube right there and then we just put this piece of trim up to hide where it comes all the way down here and goes out to the outside of the bus. Yeah, and then it drips on the ground. So, two things might have been occurring. One, we might have been pinching the tube coming out and going around the corner. Secondly, is that the, um, I believe the tray might have been low, lower than the tube had to go up a little bit to come out and go out. So by raising it one inch, I believe that the tube will be flatter and the level of the water inside the condensation tray can never reach the top because now it can just exit normally and it just drain out. So hopefully what we did, that one inch movement may have changed everything for us. So what's happening then is those condenser coils inside there are getting cold enough now to wick the moisture out of the air and in turn have a lot of condensation going on, just like your glass in Florida with some, an ice, iced tea in Florida, man. It's just sweating the whole time. It's doing exactly the same thing inside of there, but it was dripping on the ground instead of <laughs> falling the tube out. So we're hoping for a best right now. So uh -huh. I think this is a good fix. You know what? I think there's still enough room to put our sign back up here. I thought it wasn't going to fit anymore, but I think it still will. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys, we had a really bad outbreak of mosquitoes. I, I tried to go for a walk this evening and I thought raindrops were hitting me and I realized it wasn't raindrops, it was some kind of bugs. I thought it was gnats or something and at one point I heard a sound that I thought was a drone. Like I literally thought maybe Mike was flying his drone over to the RV park from where he was at work. And when I looked up in the sky, it was the hugest swarm I've ever seen. And they were mosquitoes. So at that point I was freaked out. So I came back here and like made sure that the screens were all in order and working good and everything seemed fine. So I just stayed in the house for the rest of the evening. But then when I came to bed, the bedroom was filled with mosquitoes and I realized that they're crawling all over the outside of our screens and on the side windows of the bus they weren't able to find a way through there but on the back on the magnetic screen that I made they were like swarming and crawling all along the top edge and enough of them were making it over the top of the screen like they were really crawling through a narrow gap between the fabric and the metal of the bus. I didn't know mosquitoes would do that. But this is so creepy. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but I'm going to try. They're all hovering and crawling around the top edge of the screen. And like I said, on this window, they haven't been able to get through there. But um, on the back, I had to shut the window and latch it tightly to keep them from coming through that screen. 
we might have to find another solution for that. I'm not sure yet. Or we might just have to do this when the mosquitoes are this bad, but I've never seen them be this bad before. And we literally, like yesterday, had zero mosquitoes. But we had a huge rainstorm just a couple of days ago that left giant puddles around the RV park. So I'm thinking that just a huge amount of them hatched out all at once. And I'm hoping that as time goes by, because I think they have a short life cycle, and I hope that puddle dries up. So <laughs> I think we'll survive this, but man, is it weird. guys so after days or even weeks of fussing and fidgeting with the air conditioning because of the water that kept dripping out of the bottom Mike finally surrendered and agreed that it was probably just condensation okay Carrie completely doesn't understand how which this was works like at all the very first thing I said on day one when he was like this thing is dripping I was like isn't that just condensation are you done like all the water exiting Seriously? the bus from this thing is condensation it goes out that little tube that's condensation all of it the problem is is the condensation is not following the normal path out it's actually coming out through the vent area it's never supposed to do that so like i'm trying to decipher why it's doing that pioneer like is not doing a good job of capturing the condensation that's coming out so basically what's happening is it draws air in through up here the fan does and it brings it through the condenser in there and then it gets cooled through the condenser and comes out. Well, as it's drawing air through, it's also pulling a little bit of water off the condenser and it's coming down and it ends up coming out the vent area, dripping down. You can see all this brown down here. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It just picks up all this brown all the time. Well, because there's Then dust. the water drifts down here yeah. and falls out. But behind the scenes, as you can see, water gets behind here and falls and i don't know why it's doing that so see the dust turns to streaks of mud from the water dripping down for one thing and then back here it has bleached and damaged our wood back there so much water is dripping on that wood you can see on my hand just yeah. the dust here it's ridiculous so but in the meantime we've had to put this pan here Oh, to yeah, catch down here. this water, which is good for well, a little Well, the water was still continuing to drip down on this cupboard down to the bottom, and this wood was not drying out. Like, it's finally getting dry now, but it has been an ongoing problem. So this is not a, a permanent solution. We just had to do something for right Strangely, now. though, this has relieved a lot of anxiety for me, just having the water have some place to go, since it seems to continually drip right here well yeah having some place to go yeah, other than other damaging than our, our wood stuff so like i don't have a lot of bad things to say about that obviously this is what happens when people who live in a dry climate have to deal with some humidity like we don't know what to do with humidity we don't know how it works we don't understand <laughs> we're confused like we also don't have to deal with um mold or mildew out here like People out in Arizona, we don't even know the difference between mold and mildew. Like, I don't, right. what, is there a difference? Are they the same thing? Are I they something? The I don't even know. We don't have that stuff. <laughs> we don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, like, if you get a bus that's made in Arizona, it doesn't have rust. Because right. Because it just never has time to, to rust. Yeah. It dries out. It's bone dry. You could pull the floor up. It's bone dry. You might have a little spot rust there that you could just like go. Very superficial. And get it off. Because yeah. it's just like we don't rust here. Yeah. So that's why, you know, we got a lot of complaints why we didn't pull up the floor. You can have like rust problems and stuff like that. This bus was born in Glendale, Arizona. That's like this close to the sun. Right. <laughs> okay. Real quickly on another topic. Several of you have asked if our curtains also work as blackout curtains at night. So what we're gonna do is take the camera out and walk around the bus and show with some different lighting. First of all, we'll show um, whether the light shines through when we have like the main lighting on, which I think there's four of these puck lights. 
in this main area. Then we'll also turn those off and show what it's like with just these little spot lamps here. Then we'll turn those off and come over here and do the under cabinet lights in the kitchen and we'll just show everything what it looks like from outside. Test number one, the puck lights. We're going out. Okay, we just gotta wait for the motion lights to go off. Oh, there we go. Okay, I can definitely see a glow coming through the door and slightly just a little bit through the windows. I actually see it more in the door than the windows for some reason. Okay, out here in the front, same thing again. You can definitely see the glow coming through the windows. And also, I didn't take the time to really block out everything on the inside. I just kind of came out in a hurry. So if you were trying to block out, you could probably do a better job. Yeah, these definitely aren't working as blackout curtains with the brightest lights on. Um, let's turn on these little lamps. Okay, and turn the bright lights off and we'll see how this does. Any second now. Perfect timing. Okay, yeah, I can see the glow. Whoops, darn it, I moved. I think you could see the glow coming through these windows though. Oh my gosh, the one at the dinette is super bright. <laughs> it's like a spotlight in there. Now, in the front, I'm only seeing the light along the bottom edge where the curtains are not really tucked down properly. Okay, will you hit one of those under the cabinet lights? I guess I could do this one. And turn these off. One more time, let's see how this looks. Okay. Whoops, darn it, I moved again. I think the only window where you can see it is right where the light is. Which kind of tells me that A, these curtains don't actually work as blackout curtains, but B, they only really allow the light through right if they're close to the light. If you had a way to keep your light source a little bit farther away, then you might not see any light even with these curtains. Let's check from the front and the other side as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing light on this. The only light I see is what's being reflected on the shiny silver from these outside lights in the RV park. Oh, and the moonlight. Holy smokes, maybe that's moonlight reflecting off the silver. That's crazy. Okay, let's look at the other side of the bus. See, I'm not seeing as much light. I mean, there's that little golden glow, but if you could keep your light source dim and a little bit farther away from the windows, then I think these curtains would work. So that was an interesting test. You can definitely see the glow, but only at the window that is closest to where the light source is. So kind that of interesting, sense. yeah. Cool, I guess it's time for tacos then. Taco time for Michael. That's right. You gonna have a taco too? Um, yeah, I'll have a couple tacos. All right. Hook me up. You too, Mama Cita wants a taco too. You know, I guess if you were wanting these to be blackout curtains, you could still use the insole shine, but then instead of using the canvas drop cloth, just pick a blackout fabric for the front part of the curtains, right? That would work. Totally. Just popped into my head. Well, thank you guys for coming along with us today. Um, I know things are like a little scattered and stuff like that, but uh, I, I promise you, <laughs> there is like it's just a weird time in our lives right now yeah, because it's, it's a transitional phase yeah it is a very transitional phase and we're just kind of uh, locked in 
to a very short period of time. Here. Like moths in a chrys chrysalis. Yes. So, <laughs> like, I, I would imagine the next video is actually going to have some pretty exciting news. So, definitely be there next week because you guys are going to want to hear this. It's good stuff. And, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. No, I'm just, there are just, the plans are in the work. Everything is working out and some good stuff's coming. So, like, you guys, you guys are going to want to be along for this. It's really cool. So, um, All right. like the video, subscribe, and we will definitely see you guys next week. Ta-ta. Bye, guys. Take care.